Young Widow 26 and I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the stages of grief. And I have just kind of a hodgepodge kind of compilation of what I like the best. Um, again, the stages of grief are not the same for everyone. We have a general kind of idea, but sometimes people will go through certain things multiple times. They will experience certain aspects of it like anger, you know, or they might experience it in different ways. Um, so just remember when I go through these that if you're not doing exactly this or didn't experience that, that there's nothing wrong with you or the way it, there's just nothing wrong with you, nothing to worry about basically. You know, everyone's going to be somewhat different and this is just a kind of general outline. So, and also for family and friends that might be watching, um, Try to remember that too. You know, it's really important to remember that, you know, sometimes it's going to take longer with some people, um, and some may go more quickly than others, and it's just important to remember that everyone is going to be different. Your relationship with the person who passed away, good, bad, complicated, your personality, um, you know, past experiences, um, you know, and there's a lot of different variables, you know, how they passed away, all those things are going to contribute to, um, you know, how fast, how slow, um, what you experience. So everyone is going to be different because nobody's relationship is the same and nobody as an individual, that's why it's called an individual, we're all different. Okay, so there's my little disclaimer. That was almost two minutes of just giving you a little disclaimer to start. Okay, so the first stage is shock and denial. And um, the description that I found that I liked of this is that you will probably react to learning of the loss with numb disbelief. You may deny the reality of the loss at some level in order to avoid the pain. Shock provides emotional protection from being overwhelmed all at once. This may last for weeks. And yeah, I agree. That's, that was totally accurate for me. Um, and you may be experiencing the same. Stage 2, pain and guilt. As the shock wears off, it is replaced with the suffering of unbelievable pain. Although excruciating and almost unbearable, it is important that you experience the pain fully and not hide it, avoid it, or escape from it with alcohol or drugs. I think also at this time, some people um, sometimes just try to stay really busy. And um, sometimes being busy helps people, but sometimes it's a way of hiding too. So just remember that um, as a widow or widower, or also as family and friends, that being busy isn't necessarily good um, because if you're not dealing with it, it will catch up with you. Um, so just a little side note there. Um, in addition to pain and guilt, uh, there's another little part here. You may have guilty feelings or remorse over things you did or didn't do with your loved one. Life feels chaotic and scary during this phase. Yes, I so went through those things. Even the smallest things, um, which I may have mentioned in some other videos, but just things from like, uh, I should have made him more lunches, I feel bad, you know, or just stupid things, stupid fights, you know, or just, you never took that trip, um, you know, those things are going to run through your mind over and over probably, not just once. So the third phase or stage is anger and bargaining. Frustration gives way to anger and you may lash out and lay unwarranted blame for the death on someone else. Please try to control this as permanent damage to your relationships may result. This is a time for the release of bottled up emotion. Now, this goes for a lot of people in this situation. This, I think, is the reason why a lot of people have problems with, um, you know, the family of the spouse um, that passed away, all that stuff, because everyone is grieving. These stages aren't just for people that lost their husband or wife. I mean, the parents, brothers, friends, everybody like that um, are going to be experiencing these things too. So when you think about this description here, you can see how easily um, you know, people can get into confrontations about things. So in the next part of this is you may rail against fate questioning why me. You may also try to bargain in vain with the powers that be for a way out of your despair, such as I will never drink again if you just bring him back. I don't know about that example, but maybe. I don't know. I remember that I really thought um, I was frustrated uh, for a long time because I was like, I don't understand how this happened. Like, 
you know, we were good people. I mean, that's a pretty cliche thing to say. But also, like, I appreciate, I really tried to think consciously and be appreciative of my husband. And I would realize at times, you know, like, wow, you know, I'm really happy. Our life is really good. And it would almost make me, like, nervous. Like, two things are too, or things are too good, you know. Like, I want to make sure I appreciate them. Because for some reason, I thought, if you didn't appreciate things, you know, bad things would happen. But I don't think that's the case. Bad things happen anyways. And sometimes it's just worse when you realize that you didn't um, appreciate things as they were. All right. So stage four, depression, reflection, loneliness. Just when your friends may think that you should be getting on with your life, a long period of sad reflection will likely overtake you. This is a normal stage of grief, so do not be talked out of it by well-meaning outsiders. Encouragement from others is not helpful to you during this stage of grieving. I think that last sentence means that, like, when people are encouraging you, you're just, you're not into it. Like, you're not really receptive to it. Um, and I think that's really true, that part. Um, the second part of this is, during this time, you finally realize the true magnitude of your loss, and it depresses you. You may isolate yourself on purpose, reflect on things you did with your lost one, and focus on memories of the past. You may sense feelings of emptiness or despair. So this is a real suck time. Um, and I think this is kind of when people say, maybe like about three months out, somewhere around there, when things really start to die down, people aren't maybe asking you to do things so much anymore. Or maybe you just start to, to screen your calls and just not answer. Like just doing stuff seems like too much effort, leaving the house. You're like, why? I don't really feel like seeing people are doing anything. And... Um, not that you should be doing a ton of things, but I think at least getting out maybe once a day or every other day to see people if you're really isolated and by yourself the rest of the time um, is a really good idea. And friends and family, you know, keep calling even if they screen your calls, you know, email. Maybe if they don't want to do anything, just go over and sit and talk with them. Bring them a coffee. Bring them maybe one of the books that I recommended um, in my other videos. Or maybe, you know, do a picture in a frame of them or maybe of you and, and their spouse that passed away. Do something nice, you know, thoughtful. Um, or just bring yourself and say, hey, I just want to stop by and see how you're doing. Um, you know, this time is really hard. I mean, you want people around, but you want to be alone. So it's tricky. But just when you really feel like, you know, I don't feel like doing anything, it's worth it to just push yourself if you haven't been out in a while and just go get a coffee, go get a pedicure, nothing strenuous, nothing with a bunch of people that you don't know, just with a couple friends or maybe just one friend. Just get yourself out of the house, you know, laugh a little bit, enjoy yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so, yes, there's my advice for that. Okay, so stage five, the upward turn. As you start to adjust to life without your dear one, your life becomes a little calmer and more organized. Your physical symptoms lessen and your depression begins to lift slightly. So this is, ugh, sounds a little bit better, doesn't it? Okay. Um, but I think still a little bit hard, I, you know, when things start to get like this. Um, stage six, reconstruction and working through. As you become more functional, your mind starts working again and you will find yourself seeking realistic solutions to problems posed by life without your loved one. You will start to work on practical and financial problems and reconstructing yourself and your life without him or her. So for a while, and it's again different for everyone, um, you may not even care about these things at all. Paying bills, checking your account, etc. You know, your house may be a disaster like mine. Hopefully you can't see too much clutter. Can I blur it out in the corner, um, you know, but eventually, you know, this stuff will start coming back to you. Stage seven, acceptance and hope. During this, during this, the last of the seven stages in this grief model, you learn to accept and deal with the reality of your situation. Acceptance does not nece necessarily mean instant happiness. Let me say that again. Acceptance does not necessarily mean instant happiness. Given the pain and turmoil you have experienced, you can never return to the carefree, untroubled you that existed before this tragedy, but you will find a way forward. You will start to look forward and actually plan things for the future. Eventually, you will be able to think about your lost loved one 
Without pain, sadness, yes, but the wrenching pain will be gone. You will once again anticipate some good times to come, and yes, even find joy again in the experience of living. Now, the thing to remember about all this stuff, because you may not be in the mood right now to hear something like that, um, so totally understandable. You may want to go back to the first couple of stages and listen to that again. Um, and this is also some good advice for friends and family. Um, you know, sometimes telling them, like, you know, you will find someone else, that definitely is not always <laughs> a good idea. Um, you know, and that sometimes I may be comforting, but in general, I think that's something that a lot of people get upset about because, you know, it's a long way off. And you know what? In reality, that may not happen. So let's, you know, just talk about, you know, things that are happening now and, um, you know, make just short-term things to look forward to, um, like maybe going on a short trip or seeing some family or, just making plans with friends to go get coffee and a pedicure. Again, I keep saying the same things. But, um, you know, because these are just things that I know I enjoy. And it's going to be different for everyone else. Like, guys may want to go golfing. Actually, I did try golfing. I started going golfing um, in the first couple, couple of months and just going with friends to the range. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, I really thought I would never play golf or anything like that. Now I have clubs, but it's freezing. So let's hope that when it gets warm again, I'll actually use them. Okay. Um, so that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions, comments, um, you can post them underneath this video or on my YouTube page, or you can email me at youngwidow26 at yahoo. And again, I hope this was helpful and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.